Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another weekly used gun review. Remember the purpose of this video is strictly to be educational. Nothing in this video is for sale. I just take a sampling of about eight different firearms and do a one to two minute review of each to give you guys an idea of stuff that's out there on the market. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, guys, remember the format of this video is we start off with the most common and we move through the least common that you are likely to find if you walk into your dealer's gun store on their used gun shelf. Anyway, starting us off, this is a similar, uh, this is similar to one that we had in last week's video. This is a Walther P22. Now, the one I had before was the California compliant version without the threaded barrel and was also the standard barrel length configuration. Now, you're gonna notice this one has an elongated barrel uh, with a little barrel extension here at the front. This is uh, cut, has lightning cuts, but it is not ported. Now I'm gonna keep it kind of brief since I talked about this handgun in general last week, but as far as semi-automatic 22s go, you do have to be pretty selective on the ammunition you're running because these firearms can be kind of picky. Remember you are uh, re reliant on the power of the round to actuate the entire slide. So if you have something on a full length slide configuration like this, you are you do need something a little bit higher pressure, a little higher velocity to move that slide for you. CCI mini mags tend to work the best in firearms like this, but uh, it's in, in my experience, Walther P22 and the Ruger SR22, which is very sim similar to this, um, have a really good track records. They do work well. Of course, occasional jams are gonna happen, which is why I don't typically recommend a semi-automatic 22 for defensive purposes, just because jams are sort of inevitable. They make great target guns though, and a good way to practice on the range without burning up all of your nine or 45 or 40 or whatever it is you shoot. But. Anyway, market on something like this, the target model used is going to be in about the 250 range right now. That's about where they're going. Remember, prices are a little bit elevated because of everything going on. So keep that in mind as I move through these videos. Um, I keep a current market uh, prediction on things instead of, you know, sort of normal market uh, trend prediction. So I, I kind of, those numbers will change based on where the market is, whether for better or for worse. So right now these are going about 250, even a little bit higher right now. Um, new, eh, under normal circumstances, you should be able to find these around the 350 mark. But uh, anyway, there is that one for you. Okay, up next I have a Rock Island. I'm a big fan of these handguns and they are very popular and they are good sellers uh, when they come in either new or used. So Rock Island 1911s are actually made in the Philippines. This one here is a um, officer's model, so it's got the three to three and a half inch barrel. Remember, commander is gonna be about four to four and a quarter, and government's gonna be five inch. So this one here is a 45, they made them in nine millimeter. They actually have the 22 TCM and nine millimeter conversion guns and the 10 millimeters as well, and you get them in a different variety of finish types and uh, Grip scale panels, whether it's got the extended beaver tail safety. This one here has a skeletonized hammer and trigger. Um, but anyway, something like this, brand new, you're gonna find in about the 450 to 500 range. Uh, used, you're in about the three to four, somewhere in there. Now, Rock Islands, these are known for being a very basic and watered down 1911. Uh, their GI models are typically what you would see as like a World War II issue 1911A1, basic parkerized finish, and I'm talking about their government profile with the five inch barrel. Uh, those do come with a wood slab panel type grip like this. Again, the same price point, four to five hundred dollars. For the money, they are excellent. They work really well. I have a lot of questions from people when they come in and they see them, especially if they're new to firearms. They see, you know, a Rock Island for 450, and they see a, a, a Kember for 12, and a Sig next to it for 1200, and then you know the SR 1911 from Ruger for 750. And the typical question is, is that not a good 1911 because of the price point? They are very functional, and what they do well is put a round down range where you're saving your cost is in the finish, the grips the trigger, things like that. And this is a little bit upgraded with those features, but typically the base model just has an A1 trigger, the A1 uh, beaver tail safety, the A1 hammer spur. Um, and you know, so what you're doing is you're saving on those sorts of features. When you're getting into a more expensive 1911, typically those are the features you're paying for, the better finish, the better sights, the better trigger, things like that. So anyway, for the money for a basic 1911, they are excellent. And if you can find one in good condition used, it is definitely worth taking a look at absolutely worth the money in my opinion. All right, now this is a good one for juxtaposition on the last one we just looked at. This is an SDS Imports 1911A1. These are actually made in Turkey. 
This is one of the all black variants. Um, the They make also, or what had first come out to the market was sort of the black oxide-ish military parkerized government model like this with the brown sort of fibrite keys grip panels uh, to really make it look like the World War II era 1911 A1. Now, like the Rock Island that you just looked at, these are very, very, very cost effective. Brand new, we've been seeing them for about the $399 to $420 price point. Uh, use something like this is going to be in about the low threes. Uh, again, this one is uh, this one was actually purchased brand new from our store and then uh, sold back to us about four or five months later. Uh, so something like this, I mean, one owner in excellent condition, uh, around the $300 price point for a 1911. This is a 45 ACP. Really, really good value, especially if you're looking to get into collecting the World War II type era stuff and you like the idea of having that sort of placeholder, the 1911A1, in the military configuration, again, they make more of a direct retro looking 1911A1 with the brown grip scales on it. Uh, for the $400 to $450 price point is a really good economical way to go about it, unless you really want to have that authentic World War II era 1911, which you know you're going to be in about the $1,500 plus range to buy one of those. So really good shooter you can take out and not worry about uh, putting rounds through a piece of history like an original. Or if you have an original and you want one of these to take out to the range as a shooter, a really good option, especially for the money. Um, since these came onto the market, these came onto the market a little under a year ago, and I have sold uh, quite a few of them here in my store. Uh, had nothing but great feedback on them. They do a really good job of doing what a firearm is intended to do, which is put a, a, a round down range accurately and effectively and reliably. Uh, but again, you're just getting sort of a watered down basic package 1911A1. So for the price, if you see one of these, definitely worth taking a look at. I mean, keep in mind for like $300, $350 compared to other things on the market, like a Taurus G2C, I mean, those are around the 200 range, but for a little bit more than a Taurus G2C, a full metal frame 1911, not a bad deal. So just something that I uh, wanted to share with you guys, uh, something to keep an eye out for. All right, up next I have an Anderson AM15. Now, Anderson is mainly known for their parts, so people do a lot of builds on Anderson lowers. Uh, because the lowers you can typically find for about the 40 to $50 price point online. Of course, you're gonna pay a transfer fee on top of that, so all in, you're probably gonna be around the 60, 70, $80 price point, unless you find one in a dealer's uh, gun shop. Again, about 50 bucks is where you're gonna find it listed at retail. Now, Anderson also makes full completed rifles, which you can get on their website. Uh, there are, are some wholesalers and manufacturers that uh, do distribute those products as well, and they're not very expensive. You should be able to find a complete Anderson AR-15 anywhere in about the $600 to $800 price point, depending on the options. Now, this one, I am actually not too sure if this was a home build or if this was a completed Anderson uh, AR-15. Either way, the price is going to be the same on a used product like this right now at about the $4. $450 price point. Now, while we are on the topic, I know I have discussed this in the past, home builds typically are not going to do very well on the used market in terms of getting all your money back out of them. Typically, you know, people come into our store with home built AR-15s. Uh, some of them even have upwards of $1,500 and $2,000 worth of parts in them. It's like building your own customized modded out motorcycle or a car. You're really going to get pennies back on the dollar for all the parts that you put into it. Of course, the new buyer that comes along to buy that might not be as interested in the way you design the firearm. And the way, and the more sort of unique and odd it is, if it's weird colors, if it's got weird niche type parts on it, you know, hand guards that are a really weird type of design or like uh, Spartan helmet, uh, you know, uh, molded into the magazine well, things like that, the more specified the buyer is going to be on that and it's harder for the gun store to move. So if you take in a home built AR-15, the more unique it is, the less likely you are to get more money back out of that because the gun store is gonna be a little bit more worried about how many people are gonna come in that might be interested in purchasing that. Now, if this were a home build, this is kind of the way you'd want to do it. Very, very basic. Um, you know, there's always going to be people, you know, for the four to $500 price point, there's always going to be people uh, lining up to buy stuff like this, especially around the times that we're in right now. So this is just a basic, straightforward, you know, M4 configuration AR-15. 
which is going to appeal to our more broad market, uh, especially people looking to get more into the entry level. Now, one other thing to consider with uh, home builds, although AR-15s are very simple and straightforward to put together, and there are typically not that many problems with builds, uh, people can be a little bit leery as into the quality or the attention that you put into building the firearm if everything is uh, you know lined up correctly and all that, if headspace is okay. Uh, which again, you know, is you're not going to have much of a fix because everything's going to line up on the barrel nut anyway when you're putting it together. But anyway, on a used, say, Smith & Wesson or a Ruger AR-556, there is a company there that the customer can call if they have issues, even if it's not under warranty, whereas something like this, a home build, uh, going to be a little bit less recourse. But uh, anyway, there is that for you. Home build AR-15s or Anderson AR-15s, pretty common that you're going to see them. Uh, and this takes our number four spot. Okay, up next is another one that I've actually had on our last video. This is a Ruger New Model Vaquero. Now, this was not the exact one I had on last week's video. Last week was a stainless 357 in the Bisley configuration. This is a blued 45 Colt and the standard single action army configuration. So I'm not gonna go over too much of the information about this as I did it uh, in the last week's video, so you can refer back to that one. But the gist of it is, is this was designed really to mimic or fit into the niche of the cowboy single action army type of configuration. Six shot, now, like I mentioned in the last video, there is a couple internal differences between this and a Colt single action army. Whereas you don't have a half cock uh, position on the hammer. You can keep the hammer at rest to load and unload. There is a transfer bar. So if you want more details on that, just refer to last week's video. Again, the traditional grip angle here, this one has the really nice wood grips. This is a four and three quarter inch barrel. The three barrel links on the single action army were four and three quarter, five and a half, and seven and a half. Um, but anyway, not much else to say about it that I haven't already said. Remember the Ruger New Vaqueros uh, new are in about the seven to eight hundred dollar range used. You're going to find them in around the six range in good condition in the box like this one. So just another nice one to show you there for this video. Okay, up next I have a Remington 7400. Now this one would come onto the scene in about 1981. Uh, it did replace the Remington Model 740 and then was replaced by the Remington Model 750 in 2006. So this is a semi-automatic hunting firearm. Beautiful configuration, blued finish, walnut stocks, checkering here on the forward hand grip, as well as back here on the wrist of the stock as well. So these were offered in a multitude of different calibers. You had them in six millimeter Remington, 243, uh, 270, seven millimeter Remington Express, uh, 280 Remington. This one here is a 30 out six and 308. So you could get them in lots of different calibers. Um, this one here has a couple magazines in excellent condition. Not a lot to say about them. They are very functional, semi-automatic hunting rifles, very nice looking and very price effective. Even though they are no longer made today, you can still pick up a really nice condition one like this uh, for about the $600 price point. So for a nice classic Remington, you really can't beat that. Uh, of course, in worse condition, you can get them down around the three, $400 mark. Um, which is about where they bought them out. But you know, a nice package overall. It is drilled and tapped here at the top for a scope. Not much else to say about it. Not too common. I've had a handful of 7400s come in in the six or so years that I've been open. Uh, just a really overall nice package. There's always buyers for this type of thing, so it's nice when they come in. All right, up next I have a pretty interesting one here. This is a Beretta Mini Cougar. So the Cougar 8000 series, which were made in 9mm 357 SIG 40 and 45, would come onto the scene in about 19 1994, and they were meant to be sort of a smaller compact version of the standard Model 92. Now the standard Cougar, of course, was larger than this. This is the Mini Cougar, and this one actually features, if you see the barrel there, a rotating to lock or turning locking barrel, which you see on the modern day Beretta PX4 Storm. So the PX4 Storm is, of course, like a polymer version of this concept, if you will. Now, the 8000, the Beretta Model 8000 was the 9mm, the 8040 was the 40, the 8045 was the 45, which is what this is, and then the 8357 was the 357.6, so pretty simple there. Now, the Mini Cougar, uh, this one, an 8045 Mini Cougar, um, produced between 1994 and 2004, so they've been discontinued for quite a while, and actually they are not that common to find these days, so they are uh, definitely increasing in value, very nice 
classic looking design. The design of the Cougar was actually intended for the 40 because the 40 was becoming very popular at the time of the release of this handgun. Um, these right now on the used market are sitting around the five to $600 price point, so they're not hugely up there in terms of price, but they are definitely climbing. Uh, you can also find that, this in an Inox version. They had a double single action. They had the version with a decocker. They call it, I believe, the D, the F, and I can't remember the other, maybe the S. So they have different variations of these. Um, so anyway, this one here is in particularly very nice condition. No box, two magazines, and one holster. So again, something like this, I expect to sell between about five and $600. A nice classic Beretta. If you see one, definitely worth taking a look at. The only other Cougar I've ever had in my store was the 8040. It was a 40 version. It was not the Mini Cougar. I believe it was the standard, uh, and it did have its box. And that was about a year ago. If you go on BitChute, you can find my old Used Guns of the Week videos. It's on one of those. I don't know which episode. Um, but anyway, um, there's that for you. All right, last but not least, I have a pretty interesting little critter here. This is a Colt Pony, not to be mistaken with a Colt Mustang. The main difference between the two is the Pony is a double action only with a bobbed hammer, and the Mustang is a single action only with a full hammer, kind of like a 1911, if you will. Uh, these are not very common, and these were only on the scene for about four years, being produced between 1996 and the year 2000. I believe the Mustangs were always more popular, of course, because the trigger point on this is very heavy and very long with a long reset which is to be expected of a deep concealment pocket carry 380 pistol you don't want that really super light trigger now the mustang had a hammer of course single action with the safety so you had that there the mustangs just always had more of a following and they were produced for much longer i believe introduced in the 1980s and uh, sold for about as long as these did so a much longer career on the mustangs now really nice stainless finish with these black sort of uh, rubberized plastic grips with the colt pony emblems. This one's an overall uh, pretty good condition with two factory magazines and a holster but no box. The market on these is around the four to six hundred dollar mark depending on what it has and its overall condition. Uh, so still a little bit of collectability to them. Now this is actually the first Colt pony I've ever had in here. I have had a handful of Mustangs which would make sense because they were made much longer than these were. These just don't exist that much even though they are pretty rare. Again they are not super high in value. So if you are looking for a concealed carry 380 pistol with a double action only bobbed hammer this is a good option to consider uh, and also if you are a Colt collector uh, also something you might want to take a look at this is a series 90 um, six round capacity 380 elongated beaver tail of course there's no grip safety or anything like that but overall a really nice elegant looking handgun and would make a fine addition to anybody's collection if you do see uh, see one Again, the pony, or if you see what looks like a Mustang to you with no hammer, that's what it is. It is the pony uh, worth taking a look at. So anyway, happy I had one here to share with you guys on this week's video. Well, that is all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and also consider subscribing to my channel if you wanna see more content like this. And again, as always, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave you off there. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.